Hello forever friends and family. Welcome to our Zoom meeting and we are going to read, to study and implement the book written by Keith and Tom Beagle Schreiter, Breaking the Brain Code. Well, everybody know that, or almost everybody know that Tom Beagle Schreiter is a veteran. He, she, he is a legend of multi-level marketing business with over 50 years of experience. So when I saw the title of the book, I immediately jump in and they purchase and I am on a page 27 today. And we will read again, study and implement and hopefully to discuss what we are going to read today and later, next couple of more we webinars. And I have uh, some additional project for everybody to do. We will discuss more specific details later. But just to begin with, I would like to ask my friend and partner, supervisor from Brooklyn, Isaac Gilbinovich, to continue. Isaac, go ahead, please. Good evening, everybody. And uh, we start with preface. Yes, I want success. I'm all in on my journey to the top. Our brain listens to our optimistic pep talk and then ignores it. What? This time it will be different. I will work on my New York New Year's goal every day until I reach it. Our brain listens, acknowledges our good intentions and laughs. Then it orders another beer and some popcorn, leans back and watches the fantasy. I'm a winner. I have the power within me. I will succeed. Our brain listens and thinks. Sound like some overpriced motivational weekend cult. And then our brains goes back to working full time to sabotage our success. What is that all about? Our brains are messed up. Our prospects' brains are messed up too. We have deep subconscious mind programs that tell our brains what to do. Our brains are survival organs designed to keep us alive. And if we are reading this right now, our brains have done a pretty good job so far. Let's think about this. The main mission of our brains is to keep us alive. Brains are reflective design. <clears throat> brains are perfectly designed to keep us out of danger, to avoid predators, and to survive. Our brains are not designed for network marketing. Our prospects' brains suffer the same deficiency. What does it mean? Because our brains have a different mission, our decisions don't support our network marketing daily actions. And it gets worse. Our brains work against us much of the time. The result? Frustration and poor results. What can we do? Trick our brains. Yes, we will have to work around our brain's limitations to get the network marketing results we want. What about our prospects' brains? Are they closed-minded? Do they prevent new helpful information and choices? Yes. Do our prospects' minds suffer from conf uh, con confirmation bias, fear, or fear of change, processing error? Yes. Our minds suffer from all these things, but we don't want to admit it. We can help our prospects overcome their mind limitations by understanding basic brain rules. Think of brain rules like this. Imagine we have poor vision. We can see clearly. Brain rules are like putting on a pair of co uh, corrective glasses. These glasses allows us to see what we couldn't see before. Brain rules may not change how our brains work, but they will allow us to overcome, <clears throat> excuse me, to overcome the handicap of inaccurate vision. 
let's use brain rules so everyone can change for the better. The good news, this isn't a textbook on brain science. We won't have to learn about neurons, uh, dendrites, dendrites, neuron nodes, and synap synapses. No, biology or psychology books were harmed in the, in the writing of this book. Instead, we will focus on practical, ru practical rules to help us control our brains and to help us talk to our prospects' brains more effectively. There are two young men. They are in the same company. They have the same incredible products. They offer the same outstanding opportunity. They live in the same city. They have the same prospects. They experience the same weather. They operate in the same economy. Yet, one young man struggles while the second young man succeeds. Why? The first young man says, I will talk to everyone with incredible products and an outstanding opportunity prospects will want to join. What happens? The prospects procrastinate. Someday they are not interested and many refuse to listen. His obvious reaction, blame the universe. The second young man says, young man says, prospects will love my incredible products and outstanding opportunity if they open their minds and hear my message. How can I get them to listen? How can I get them to open their minds? How can I deliver my message in a way that they will appreciate? The second young man knows that human brains are not logical. Human brains make snap judgments, horrible decisions, fall prey to irrational pre pre prejudices and seldom listen. Even if the products and opportunity are great, it won't matter if prospects won't listen to him or believe him. Hold on for a second, Isaac, please. Sorry for interruption, take a breath for just a minute or two. I just would like to discuss this last page that there are two men who has the same everything. And we, for our business owner, have the same, absolutely the same everything. We have the same marketing plan. And special for us, all group here, all group here, except Natalia Ignatenko, who originally from Ukraine, from Odessa, she accomplished level of manager in Odessa, then moved from Odessa from Ukraine to New York. Just grab her stuff as a manager and continue to do this business in the United States. The rest of us start to do this business in United States. And by the way, Nadezhda Ignatienko too. She just joined us. I hope it's Nadezhda Ignatienko. So my point is very simple. We have the same marketing plan, uh, uh, marketing plan. We have the same product. We have the same environment. All of us bilingual. Some knows English better, some less, but we have the same environment. And some of us assistant supervisor, some of us supervisor, assistant manager, manager and above. But if the conditions are absolutely the same for everybody. I just would like to bring your attention, attention to these very specific and valuable details. Isaac, please go ahead. Thank you. The second young man learns basic brain rules so that his message can be effective. And that is all we ask. We want our prospects to hear our message without prejudice. Then they can decide if our message will serve them or not. We must do more than read or memorize great facts. We have to find a way to get our message inside our prospects' heads. Do prospects, ears, do prospects' ears really work? Do prospects' ears actually work or are they just for show? Here is the no conversation that plugged my early career. 
When I started network marketing 50 years ago, I wanted to be master of the universe. This was my chance to get paid what I was worth. And yes, I got paid exactly what I was worth. Zero. Hold, hold on for a second. And again, not everybody here know the story about, I should say, our friendship and relationship with Tom Beagle Schreiter. Uh, I was honored, and many of you guys, we attend his training, we travel, if he's around in tri-state area for meetings, and even much more, we, I had the honor to invite him, and he accepted my invitation, and he held training for us in Brooklyn three years, three times he was in Brooklyn. Justice was training Big Al and Forever Living Products distributors at that time it was not forever business owner it was just distributors and last time we saw him in new jersey we have a picture isaac nadia and gary eugene and we traveled to new jersey to attend his training i know that nina attended his training somewhere and he saw him so he has a great unbelievable sense of humor and yes i got paid exactly what i was zero Please go ahead, Isaac. Okay. With the confidence that comes with ignorance and a bit of amateur pride, the universe overpaid me by allowing me to earn zero. I assumed that network marketing was the only profession in the universe that didn't require skills. That was a dumb assumption. My conversations with prospects went something like this. Me, hi, prospect. No, me, hi, my name is Big Al, prospect. No, me, but don't you want to, prospect? No, me, well, can I at least tell you, prospect? No. How do amateur network marketers explain this? They don't. They shrug their shoulders and say, we are victims. Prospects are stupid. We'll talk to someone else. That is why there is a difference between amateur network marketers and professional network marketers. We can choose which group we want to be in. The insiders, the professional network marketers learn brain rules. What are brain rules? These are shortcuts and tools that we use to control our brains. We want our brains to work for us and not against us. We can use the same shortcuts and tools to get our message past our prospects' natural brain defenses. Now our prospects hear our message and isn't, what, and isn't that what we want? For our prospects to actually hear our message, to be able to give them one more opportunity to improve their lives. It doesn't matter how wonderful our company video or presentation is. If no one will look at it, we can help people if we can get through to them. Want an example of one of these brain rules? See if this is useful. Brain rule. People don't want to change their minds. Does that sound familiar? If we change our minds, we feel that we were wrong. Nobody wants to feel wrong. Plus, we have a strong bias against information that disagrees with our current beliefs. This is why we defend our favorite band or sports team. It's called confirmation bias. What is the solution? What if we want open-minded prospects who will say yes to our message? Simple. If prospects don't want to change their minds, then open with the question that has their, their, the yes answer we want. Example one, would you want to look at my party, at, at my, would you want to look at my part-time business? We can expect a negative reply. Example number two, do you hate commuting to work every day? Our odds of a yes reply are good. Our prospects don't have to change their mind to say yes to our question. Amateur network marketer who follow example number one can expect massive rejection and no business. Professional network marketer 
who follows example number two will have lots of prospects to talk to. This looks like fun. Before we move on, let's do a few more examples of asking the right questions. Ready? Example number one. Can I give you a presentation on how you can get rich? Example number two. My neighbor is earning a lot of extra money. Would you like to know how he's doing it? Obviously, example number two will get more prospects to listen. Example number one. Can your friends and relatives tell them how good our products and opportunity will be for them? Okay. Hmm. We can feel the resistance already. Example number two. Make sure to let your friends and relatives know first. You don't want them to think you didn't like them and wouldn't even give them a chance. We don't want to be embarrassed, do we? Example number two feels better, doesn't it? Brain rules are not hard to learn, but if we don't know brain rules, we will be victims for the rest of our careers. We will struggle to find prospects, struggle to hold our prospects' attention, and go both from scratching our heads, wondering why prospects don't connect with us. Now, that is an ugly career. Top marketers are brain rules to communicate, type, top, I'm sorry, top marketers use brain rules to communicate with us all the time. That is why we hear their messages. And that is how we decide if their message will serve us or not. We should give the same courtesy to our prospects. Let's take a look at another example of rewarding, of rewarding our message. Imagine a salesman who wants to help us save money by switching our utility service to his company tells us, I want you to change your utility service to my company. Change? No, not for us. We don't know this salesman. Our minds think, what if the if electricity fails in a storm? Would this new company fix the problem? What if we want some money or there is some other tricks? Will the new company drain, our, uh, drain out my old electricity and replace it with lower voltage that won't work? A little rewarding could make a huge difference for our brains. Now, imagine the salesman says, it takes a lot of time and effort to save money on our bills, but we can reduce our bill in only four minutes. Bam! These words made it easier for us to open our minds, lower our prejudices, and add one more option to our lives. We have two choices for our career. Choice number one, watch our conversations bounce off our prospects' foreheads, shatter on the floor and then complain, life isn't fair. No one wants to listen. Yes, this is a strategy, but it's a poor strategy. Yet many amateurs networkers use it. Choice number two, learn some brain rules, become a professional network marketer, feel the power, watch prospects listen, get the bonus checks we deserve. Isaac. Take a break. Thanks a lot for your reading. And I would like to ask to continue our friend and partner manager from Brooklyn, Helen Osipov. Please proceed, Helen. Uh, good evening. Do you hear me? Yes. Uh, wonderful. Math. Our brains haven't changed much since Neanderthal times. We were bad at math then, and we still are bad at math. As a survival organ, the brain has more important things to do than math. We don't inherit math. It is a learned skill, something extra. Most people ignore the extra and get on with their lives. While there are math nerds like me, most people will cringe at the following examples. If a 14 ounce bottle on, of ketchup is $10.68, would a 680 milliliters bottle as $17 be a better value? We have 11 
5% more patents than our closest competitor. Over 62% of our users give us a five-star review. You earn 6% of the unencumbered volume past your first diamond leg. 3% of gross sales go into the global bonus pool and are split up proportionally to the amount of qualifying shares. So you earn 18% when your group volume is over 7,000 points. Isn't that great? To qualify the fast start bonus, you must sponsor three people who each have two qualified legs. Do we feel the fog advancing over our brains? We zone out and then wait for something simpler to listen to. Are we saying that our math facts should be ignored? Yes. Math is too tedious for our human to process. If we insist that we have to explain our wonderful math concepts, how about making them easier to understand? Some examples. Before, you need a $1,000 in volume to qualify. After, you need about 10 customers. Before, our higher quality product is only 31% more expensive than the cheap, low quality stuff at the store. After, you can have something that works or you can have junk. Before, he's a six figure earner and has only worked this business part-time for 13 months. After, does he look special in overly talented or overly, or overly talented? No, and yet after only one year, he's earning 2000 checks every week. Helen, hold on for a second, please. I just would like to emphasize these three examples are perfect, perfect. You see how complicated you need $1,000 in volume to qualify? Then very easy after you need about 10 customers. Everybody understand 10 customers, volume, 1,000 volume to qualify. It's pretty complicated, right? For average person who got no clue what does it mean volume. The same every next example. That's another perfect example written by case writer and uh, case writer and Tom. How we should talk to prospect. Please go ahead, Helen. Mm -hmm. Before, all uh, of our auto shipments save fifteen percent of the retail price you will be a preferred customer. After, like saving money, have this shipped automatically every month and put an extra $20 in your pocket. When most of our prospects hear math, they turn off their minds. That means we talk, but no one is listening. Wouldn't be, that be a recipe for the disaster? Still skeptical about member, numbers? Prospects won't take the time to memorize numbers from a salesman. Let's prove it to ourselves that our minds are terrible at memorizing numbers. Ready? Memorize the following 10 numbers. 174, 2091, 71.4, 954, 219.5, 8,000, 34, 2018, 82, 17. If we are like most people, we won't even try. We know it's too hard for our brains. We decide to skip trying this so that we can do something else with our limited brain power. Our world has infinite data that we could memorize. Unfortunately, our brain power is limited. We will only notice the data that is important to us. And of that we notice, we will only make the effort to memorize a tiny percentage. Our brains developed tens of thousands of years before network marketing compensation plans. There is a mismatch. Our data rich, number rich presentations will be ignored and forgotten. Let's save our time and our prospects time. 
still skeptical? Here is a great example of how our minds simplify numbers with instant shortcuts. If it's more expensive, it must be higher quality. Is, it this, is this always true? No, but it is often true. And that is enough for our brains to say, ah, close enough, let's not think too hard here. Let's move on to the next thing. This is the default option for our brains. So much to do, so little time. Let's make an instant judgment and move on to the next item. No time for math brain twisters. What do our brain do every day? They predict, they are prediction machines. Brains get stuck in a dark space inside our heads. They try to figure out what is the unknown world outside of our heads. Our brain gets hints about what is outside. Smell, that is a clue. Hearing, that helps a lot. Touch, very nice. Taste, interesting. And vision. Now, before we get too excited about vision, Let's see how much vision actually helps our brains. Take a toilet paper roll, throw away the toilet paper, keep the little cardboard tube in the center, place the little cardboard tube up to the one eye if it were a telescope, close our other eye, walk around a bit observing the world through this very narrow cardboard tube that gives us some idea of how little our brain actually sees of outside world. There are too many details in our vision for our brain to record or pay attention to. Our brain makes a decision. It says, I only will focus on a little bit. Most of the stuff my eyes see is normal. I have seen it before. I will ignore almost everything. I will use my limited focus to watch for danger and notice things that are different. Yes, most things our eyes see never get recorded into our brains. These things were not important. Our brains take our limited vision and our other four senses and attempt to figure out what is happening outside of our heads. Not very pretty. Let's prove this to ourselves. Let's say that we walked to the store yesterday. Did we notice everything that happened of the left and right of, of, as we walked? No. Do we rem remember the details of every car that passed by while walking? No. Do we remember the prices of store items we didn't buy? No. Last week, we attended a party. 30 people introduced themselves to us. How many of their names do we remember? We listen to a one hour lecture. Later, when we arrive home, our spouse says, tell me all about the lecture. After two minutes, we run out of things to say. It appears 58 minutes of the lecture was never recorded into our brains. Our brains are not video recorders. Our brains take little bits and pieces that seem important and work with these bits. Sometimes we rec record some of these to our memories. The rest, forgotten. Even our memories are messed up. Our brains do not completely record the actual memory. It only save, saves bits. When we recall a memory, it is our brain's reconstruction, a general representation based upon the little pieces we remember. So our memories are not accurate? No, our brains get our memories semi-accurate. Brains have to make up a lot of stuff to fill in the gaps. Here is an example of a messed up memory. When I was a three-year-old, I sat on a bench at the dining table of my grandparents' home. They had 10 children. I can see this memory clearly in my mind, perfect. I can see myself sitting there between two of my uncles. Wait, that is not possible. How can I see myself sitting between two of my uncles? 
That would mean I would be sitting on the other side of the table looking at me. Oh, this couldn't have happened the way I remember. My mind made it up based upon the bits it remembered. And this memory is a um, maybe at best. At three year old, our brains are still trying to figure out how to make memories. That could explain why we don't remember much of what happened before age five. Our minds are messed up. This is why we use brain tricks to overcome our brain's shortcomings. Helen, hold on for a second, please take a break. Before we move forward, I would like to ask everybody to start discussion what we already read. Thank you, I, Isaac and Helen. So if anybody would like to share some idea or start to any discussion, let's move on. You could unmute your microphone and proceed. The main point of this Zoom webinars is to have a conversation that everybody will talk. Not, I don't force everybody to talk, but it would be valuable for us to talk. Yeah. Nina, you unmute your microphone, please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Isaac, and thank you, Helen, for reading this. <clears throat> and I think it's very important to uh, get information from Bigal book uh, because I love him so much and it's always uh, fun to read his books and it's always fun to talk to him. I saw him three times, two times I attend his um, uh, lessons in Kansas City and one time we went together to a Caribbean cruise where he and a lot of um, MLM builders uh, had uh, fun. Uh, what I like uh, in this book, uh, he mm, put some uh, interesting yeah. questions. Instead of, um, would you like me to show you uh, how, uh, how to make money? Uh, he asked uh, my neighbor, he, he even didn't ask. Uh, he tell uh, a bit of information and after he asked, my neighbor is earning a lot of uh, extra money. Would you like to know how he's doing it? And it's the right question because usually when we ask uh, uh, some person, would you like or do you want or um, something like, um, uh, do you want me to show you? Uh, usually people say no. But when we give a bit of information and after ask a question, uh, usually people say, yes, I would like to. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a very good uh, phrases to use with our new uh, business builders. That's all. Thank you, Nina. Helen, your microphone still is open. Yeah. I Please just want uh, I just want to say about Big Al, he is wonderful. Um, he's like a guide because uh, definitely we go through the fog in our mind when we we know we try to um, to to know what is uh, what is it all about, and through with his guidance with explanation how to do it easier, we just put like bricks uh, in, the, in a swamp or like, you know, the good pathway to jump from one uh, side of the swamp to another one with uh, less um, mishaps or missteps uh, in that swamp. And uh, when, when you understand what he wants to, uh, to show us how to use uh, other, other people's mind you feel easier to, and you, you have less fear actually. And I experienced that on myself and it's, it's a great feeling. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Anybody else? Ludmila Semenchik, your mic, unmute the microphone, please. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I, I like that uh, Schreider, told that uh, some people and uh, mature people uh, thought that it's not 
not necessary to know something. You can be a millionaire right away. No, probably not right away, probably one year, six months, it's enough. But it's like any other job. You're supposed to have experience, you're supposed to learn something, and definitely it's a good idea to read some books and use what the read the book recommend you. Probably not every book, not every uh, idea is good for you, but definitely you will have experience and definitely uh, when you use it, you're more mature man and more experienced and uh, more successful. And I like it. That is supposed to be done. You, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to have knowledge and not only knowledge, you're supposed to uh, use this knowledge in real life. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Luda. Isaac, please go ahead. Good evening again. Uh, what I noticed from these examples is that in example number one, which is the amateur uh, networker, network marketer, there is a lot of jargon. And in example number two, it's all simplified. It's a regular English that anybody can understand. Okay. And that's very important because we think that everybody knows the lingo, but not everybody knows it. And when we start talking to people in jargon, they actually tune out. And I know it from other professions that I had. It does, it does, to, it, people do tune out when they do not understand what in the world you're talking about. So we need to use simple language, everyday common language, so people can understand and relate to what we're saying. That's it. Thank you, Isaac. All right, let's move on. And uh, I would like to say thank you to most reliable manager from New Jersey, Iris Cristobal, who joined us after her webinar. She had a webinar, that's why she didn't get on time. We had a conversation yesterday and today. She told me that she has a webinar for her team, but she joined us right now. Iris, please go ahead. Just unmute yourself. Okay, thank you, Alex. Thank you, Iris. I guess that this brings us back to prediction. Yes. Okay. Imagine our brains sitting inside our heads. What should our brains be doing? The number one brain job is to keep us alive, to protect us from danger. Our brains look at the input from our five senses and try to predict what is going to happen next. Our brains are prediction machines. Our brains guess what will happen next so it can be prepared to keep us alive. Some examples, imagine we are sound asleep. We wake up, jump to our feet, and then feel like we're going to faint. What happened? We need more blood pressure standing up. Our brain did not have enough time to tell the rest of our body to pump up the blood pressure. Our brains don't like messing up like this. We hear a rushing in the bushes next to us. Our brain says, that could be a predator. Walk further away from that bush quickly. We play basketball. We see that the basketball bounces off the rim and our brain makes a prediction where the basketball will go. Then our brain tells us to move to the predicted location. We trip and start falling into the lake. Our brain thinks it's going to be wet very soon. Breathing will be a problem underwater. Grab quick breath and then close our mouth and nose. A great job of survival prediction. So is this what the brain does all day? Pretty much. Our brains don't spend a lot of time or effort on the secrets of the universe. Our brains have a job to do to keep us alive. Prediction skills. We talk, our audience appear to listen. However, we are professionals. We know better. Their eyes are open. 
they gently nod in agreement, but we know they are not listening. Nothing gets recorded. Too much information, blank stares. Nothing feels important to our audience. What are their brains predicting? This salesman is going to talk forever. More meaningless facts that I would forget about anyway. I will hear the things that are wonderful. This is the best. Something everyone needs and blah, blah, blah. Young, oh look, that lady has green hair. I've never seen that in my neighborhood. If you want to get our audience attention, we need to break their prediction accuracy. How do we do that? With a surprise. Have we ever listened to a comedian? How do comedians keep their audience engaged? With surprise. Surprise makes good comedy. We predict an ending to the comedian's story, but our prediction turns out wrong. This keeps us engaged. Listen to a stand-up comedian and notice how often there's a surprise ending to the humor. Can we surprise our audience? Yes. Are we naturally good at this? Not likely. We will get better in the future now that we know this surprise holds attention. So what can we do in the meantime to get our audience attention? Ask questions. Imagine we have an amazing fact. We could simply tell our audience the fact. They might forget it quickly. Too risky. Instead, we will ask a question. Now we have our audience attention. They have to pay attention as they try to guess the answer to our question. And if our answer is absolutely amazing, they will be surprised. Kaching, we succeeded. We succeed in getting one little piece of information into our audience brains. Phew, that was a lot of work, but we are professionals. We can do this. Ready for some examples? Question to the audience. Consider your 10 closest neighbors. How many of them get overcharged in their electric bills? The audience pauses to think, I don't know, two, four. I wonder what is the correct answer. Us, nine out of 10 electricity bills in our neighborhood get overcharged. That is money stolen directly from our pockets. An amazing fact. And we got it inside our audience brains. We are good. Here's another example. Question to the audience. At what age does our skin begin to wrinkle? 25, 30, 35, 40. Our audience mumbles look at their partner's wrinkles. They think, I have to make a guess here. We have our audience attention. Then we announce the answer, age 23. The audience cast their looks of horror across their faces as they think, I hope you have a solution. This is too easy. Let's do another example. Question to the audience. There are 10 people in your row. Look at them for a second or two. How many of them do you think have a calcium deficiency? The audience didn't expect this question. Plus now they must look at everyone in their row. Some look healthy and others well. Maybe they could have a calcium deficiency that ruined their looks. Us, 68% of the people in your row have a calcium deficiency. Staggering. Shocking. Does this get our audience attention? Well, wait, we messed up. We used math. Now that was dumb. What does the number 68 means to most people? Not much. It seems to mean a lot, but they are not sure. We missed our chance. Let's redo our question, make our math work for us instead of against us. Question to the audience. Two out of three people have a calcium deficiency in this country. Look at the person you're right and the person you're left. Guess which two you have that deficiency. If only one of your neighbor looks okay, then you are the one of the calcium losers. Now, this is getting interesting. Let's do one more example for opportunity. Question to the audience. You have an average income of 52,000 a year. Banks are paying 3% interest. If you sacrifice your family life and turn your eight hour days into nine hour days at work, how much extra would you have at the end of 20 years? 
the audience stares into space. Oh no, math, torn off my brain. Well, if I give my family, give up my family for 20 years, I will only see my kids on weekends. Ouch. This must be better, at least a million dollars. Us, got the number in your mind? How large is your number? I know you're thinking of better, better be worth it as you love your family. Well, here's the answer. In 20 years, you would have about 168,000 after taxes. That's before inflation. In 20 years, that could be the average car price. Yes, we sacrifice our lives for a car. Would you like to know a better way? The audience is thinking, I'm not gonna trade my family for a car. We have the audience attention. This is not what their minds predicted. Yes, with this simple question technique, we can take responsibility if our message is heard or not. We don't have to blame prospects anymore. And what if we decide not to do this? That means we decide to withhold our off offer opportunity for our prospects. That is selfish. We don't want to be that kind of person. I just hold on for a second, please take a break. Thank you for your reading. And would we like to discuss any thing we just heard? Uh, yes. Please go ahead, Iris. Um, just reading like where I catched up. I like the way he he changed wordings. You're giving the same message, but with this surprise and then with the change of the wordings, people are more open to hearing what your information is. And I think it's a new way of looking how we sharing the information now, because we, we usually do it one way. And now um, this book is showing us that there is another way. So even if like, like for me example, I'm doing my Facebook line, I could ask questions similar to him so that I could get some of my audience attention. And that could be in any other cases too, where I'm discussing with the um, future customers. So I, li I really like the way this book is starting. Thank you, Iris. Well, I, I would like to ask everybody, what is your favorite quote or sentence from Big Al? We had it many, many times when we, when it was time when we had a meeting in New York, we read, study, and implement other Big Al book, like Two Minute Story and some other books. Anybody would like to share any quotes and explain why? Okay, Helen, you raise your hand. Nina will be next. Please go ahead. My favorite phrase is there are two types of people in the world. And uh, because this is for me, the uh, qualification phrase, because uh, our product will work for everybody, but not, not everybody will be open to that. And for example, uh, I, all, uh, I would ask, uh, there are two types of people in the world. One type is who, people who trust doctors with their medication uh, and side effects, or uh, a second is, uh, is like people who believe uh, or trust natural, uh, natural stuff. And that is my qualification. And uh, I, it works wonderfully for me because uh, you don't need to spend more time like explaining everything or answer questions. If person doesn't believe in this way, it's not our person. And we just have a, say, have a nice day. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Nina, you are next. Go ahead, please. Uh, my favorite phrase is, would it be okay if... And after this phrase, you can ask any question. Uh, because usually people uh, may make attention if, if you ask, would it be okay if... Uh, if we ask, uh, if I would you... It's a, uh, diff a little bit different phrase. Uh, I think it's from not big girl, from different person. But anyway, this very um, good phrase to ask. Would it be okay if I show you a way how you can make uh, extra money? Would it be okay if I show you what kind of product I use to be healthy and, and so on? 
And usually people um, kind of uh, more loyal to answer yes. So I use this phrase uh, all the time. Absolutely, 100, thank you. Would it be okay if I share with you valuable information how to generate additional income on a part-time basis? Or would it be okay if, and now we get to my idea, the project for everybody who would like to participate. So my idea is very simple. I would like to share with you and I hope that majority of you will join me. You know a lot of sentences or phrases like that. So if you have this sentence, like, would it be okay if send it to me? I already put it in the file. Use something, not use, look for something else. You have a collection, I have my collection. I would like to create file for everybody with phrases from Big Al, from Eric Worre, from Team Sales. It doesn't matter. We have a lot of, a lot of information a lot of information. It should be short sentences, but it must be useful for everybody, for our business. Then next time I will share this file with everybody and we will continue to build this file and it will be file for everybody. You know my email address, send it to me. I will make a file, I will share with everybody. How do you like this idea, guys? No doubts in my mind, it will be very, very helpful for everybody. Great, great idea. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. Yes, it will be helpful for all of us and we share with, with each other. And after that, yes, just go ahead and just talk. And like example, where there are many, many examples. If two or three agreed on a common sense, nothing is impossible. And even if you don't remember who said it, it doesn't matter. Tim Sale said, do not hesitate to use some sentences if you think it's helpful, but you don't know who is the author. Or not, uh, we don't have an agenda to say, okay, it says it was written by Big Al or uh, uh, Don Fela. Just use the sentence. If we do remember, we are going to put it in a file. If not, that's okay too. So please send it to me. Anybody else would like to say something? We are going to finish up. We are, as you see, it's not a big book. It's already 24%. We read it and we had a nice conversation. I love it. And again, I encourage everybody to invite somebody to join you next time. Then we finally should have not 11 people, but twice more. And if everybody invite one new person, it will be 22. And then we will see what happened. Again, I would like to say thank you to all readers, to Iris, to Helen, to Isaac, and everybody who joined. Be safe and healthy. And I have a very good news for you, for everybody. It's the first month of summer. Congratulations. The second month, Following will be summer again. And one more great news. Third month will be summertime. <laughs> Enjoy as much as you possibly can. I'll talk to you next Monday and I expect you're going to send me some sentences. Be safe and healthy. Don't swim too much. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. All the best, everybody. Thank you. Кстати, а как можно работать на странице?